Welcome to Kikiko Farm, where we do things differently. Well, I've been given a dog. Um, a thank you, thank you. A container of wine. It was less Pinot Gris and more Pinot Grizzly. Um, and so we're going to extract the alcohol from it. Shame to go to waste, eh? Please, let me put this down a moment. It's quite heavy. Uh, you will need a still. Fortunately, here's one I prepared earlier. We'll start off with the boiler. Then you need the still head. And something to collect it in. Now for the tricky part. Stills work by boiling alcohol and condensing it. To condense it, you need cooling water. We start off with a big saucepan. Into that, we put an ordinary garden fountain pump. The water is then pumped from the saucepan through this thick tube into the still up there, and it comes back through this little tube and drains away into the sink. Why bother with all this pump rigmarole? Well, when our main water pump turns on, we get great water pressure, and then it sort of builds up in an accumulator, and then the pump turns off. And we get pressure from the accumulator from a while, it dribbles down, and then the pump kicks in again, and we get lots and lots of water pressure, and it's very bursty. And if you want to make consistent quality alcohol, you need a constant water flow. And this setup gives us a constant water flow. We also need to stick the little thermometer on top, so we know when we boiled away all the alcohol and from the temperature we can tell when they're just boiling water. And we need to put a load of marbles inside. The marbles go in there to provide little places for the boiling alcohol to start boiling. It just makes the whole thing more consistent. And remember, if we want consistently good alcohol, we have to be consistent. Let's get the booze in. A tip for new players is to make sure that that tap is closed first. So now it's a case of popping the lid on. Experienced brewers will also add a few drops of defoaming agent, which is a, a silicone oil based compound, which, as the name suggests, stops this all foaming up. Because when it foams up, foam comes out the spout and your spill and uh, your still pukes. Turning on power to the heating element inside the boiler, clamping the lid down. waiting for it to come to a boil. A watch still never boils. Yes, I'm still at it. <laughs> still. <laughs> mm. For safety's sake, we'll collect the first 40 mil or so of liquid that comes out of the still and set fire to it, because that probably contains any methanol that might have been in the brew. Methanol is the stuff that makes you go blind, and it's hardly ever found in a real brew. It's usually put there by people adulterating their brews with industrial alcohol. I haven't actually turned the water pump on yet. Let's do that now. Yeah, switch. All right. Oh, yeah. There we go. Now this is where, there we are, that's the water that's done its job coming out just to save water. Uh, while things are starting up, I just divert that back into there. When it's running, the hot water will go out and then we top it up 
with cold water coming in. This can overflow, doesn't matter, the water pressure remains constant. For additional cooling, because some of the stuff coming out of the still is still a vapour, I like to put the collecting vessel in a bowl of cold water. It does a little bit more condensing. The first hint we have of alcohol actually coming out is a little bit of condensation here on the tube. That happens to around 50 Celsius. Now we're done, we'll have a look inside here, this horrible mess. And you can see there's the maximum line. We we're actually filled up slightly above that. All this space here is the alcohol we've taken away. So we'll drain that. This is just a funny little gizmo I made. Two stop it splashing everywhere. We'll clean up the uh, inside of the still so it's a nice bright copper color. Uh, which actually removes nasty sulfurous tastes and then we will add the distillate and start all over again. Retrieve the marbles. And then we pour in the distillate using the whirlpool effect. And then we start it up all over again. This time we'll get about 80% by volume alcohol. 80% by volume is far too strong to drink except for a bet. And even then with caution. But what we do is we leave all the stuff that isn't alcohol behind so that you don't get hangovers so often and then we just cut it down with water to a drinkable uh, level of alcohol. You may have heard the term degrees of proof or proof spirit. Well, 100% proof spirit in days of old would be one that you could moisten gunpowder with and still light it. You can see where this is going, can't you? Now I'm actually appropriately licensed for gunpowder in New Zealand and so I will put a pile of old-school unglazed gunpowder down there. And then I will add some of our spirit that we've just made, and we'll see what happens. Looks moist to me. Before anyone says anything, safety is a factor. We'll find out in a minute whether the gunpowder will ignite. At the moment, that's the spirit burning off. So, any moment now, she should go. I'd say that was proof, wouldn't you? After that explosive finale, that's your lot down on Geeko Farm.